Bill S-219, an act re respecting a National Ribbon Skirt Day, was introduced in the Senate by the Honourable Mary Jane McCallum on November 20, 24, 2021. I was blessed to have the opportunity to attend and participate in study of the bill at the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs this past Monday, where it passed, and now here we are in third and final reading. I want to thank Senator McCallum for being at the heart of creating National Ribbon Skirt Day throughout Canada, which upon the passing of this bill will be celebrated every January 4th. The Cote First Nation and the community of Kamsack are neighbours in my riding of Yorkton Malville. On December 18, 2020, the 10-year-old Isabella from the Cote First Nation wore a ribbon skirt to her school in Kamsack. She knew the special meaning behind her ribbon skirt, that it was a centuries-old spiritual symbol of womanhood, identity, adaptation and survival, and as a way for women to honour themselves and their culture. That day, Isabella was told that her outfit was inappropriate for formal day. It didn't match, and that next year she should wear something different. I want to say directly to Isabella, Isabella, I am so sorry you were exposed to such hurtful and devastating experience, and that it was embarrassing and humiliating. But how you, your sisters, your mom and dad, Chief George, and your Code First Nation family chose to respond to such a grievous experience and how you responded to international attention, how you also chose to respond to the Good Spirit School Division, your school, and the wrong that you experienced, you did this with fortitude wrapped in a forgiving heart and a mind that saw the good that could come out of a place of sorrow. As I listened to Chief George and your dad speak at committee, their words brought to light the source of your strength. And I think it very best for me to share some of those words uh, with you today, Isabella, again, and also to the people who are listening, to understand where your strength comes from. Chief George used words like, in the spirit of truth and reconciliation, talking with Chris and Linda, Landa, sorry, Lana, we decided to make this a positive impact on our nation. They decided that they would have a ribbon skirt day, and Isabella, you would wear a ribbon skirt along with all of the women and your peers on a special day, special to specifically acknowledge what you went through. Chief George described the ribbon skirt as, and I quote, something that our community, our ladies have been wearing in ceremonies, and it represents a lot of issues in regard to what our people have been going through with murdered and missing women, suicide, and a lot of addictions that are in our community. It's a way of us coming together and healing." End quote. He also spoke of the participation of the Good Spirit School Division, Cote First Nation, and the Kamsak Collegiate Institute deciding to come together and come up with a day when this young girl, Isabella, could tell the world her story in a manner that was supported by her dad, Chris, and her mother, Lana. He spoke of the opportunity with the Good Spirit School Division that opened a door regarding the curriculum to put Cote language, history, and all the things that First Nations have gone through into the non-First Nation school, to introduce land-based training, which is bringing the schools out to Cote First Nation to give them an opportunity to participate in cultural activities, as well as a cultural room in the school, which some of the elders visit and they share their stories with those that are interested. He shared the desire to see all cultures represented in the school to be proud of who they are and to wear their attire anytime, not just on January 4th. Isabella, your dad also shared such heartfelt comments, saying that the now Director of Education at Good Spirit School Division was very gracious and gave the impression she believed what he shared about what you experienced. He said, and I quote, we were immediately working on solutions. I remember us speaking about faith and belief. I remember speaking about the coat of many colors and how the Creator made such a wondrous variety of people that we might fellowship and be close together and learn each other's ways, learn to be tolerant of each other and loving of each other. He went on to say, these are all values that my family stands firmly on. We have to be the change that we see in the world. 
And clearly, Isabella, those values are represented in who you are and how you behave. He continued saying, I've raised, I'm raising seven girls. That is amazing, all on its own. I'm raising seven girls with this in their hearts. I get the strength to do this as a father through my wife and my family's culture. We are just so humbled to be honored in such a way and to stand for all the First Nations and Indigenous peoples. You know, I, I don't have a lot more to say, but I, I want to make sure that I end with at least this final comment by your father, Isabella. It truly speaks to why you've been able to turn ashes into beauty and why Ribbon Skirt Day will be remembered as a significant turning point in reconciliation in so many ways. He said, I think that the advocacy that my daughter displayed was definitely through the hand of the Creator. Nothing is by mistake, and the divine nature of what's going on here shows that the Lord is in all things, and He's guiding us all here today to do the right thing and show unity and some respect and realize our mistakes of the past can be righted. And we need to do the best thing for the youth of Canada now. I believe that's what we're doing today." End quote. So I just want to say, uh, Isabella, I am looking forward to January 4th on being home, no matter what. I don't know what else is going on. I'll have to talk to the whip, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> but I will be there, and I'm so grateful for the invitation. And again, uh, this is an amazing uh, achievement of reconciliation, and I'm so very pleased uh, to represent the, the um, First Nation of Cote and the communities of Yorkton Melville. Thank you, Madam Speaker.